Hey guys, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and we're here at kind of Gamescom. So what Asus have done, and they have done this in the past with the X600 boards from AMD, is they've basically kind of hijacked the event. So we're here in Cologne and we're going to be looking at basically a whole range of new motherboards as part of the X870 and X870e lineup. Starting with this one, this is the ProArt X870e Creator Wi-Fi. As the name suggests, being part of the ProArt series, it's kept with that same kind of gold and black design choice. But this has actually got some really cool features on it, mainly in terms of the M.2Q release. We all remember sort of getting rid of screws and having that and basically being able to, I guess, build a system a lot, lot simpler. This is even simpler now that you just press that. This comes off, thermal pad there, thermal pad there, put your drive in, put it back in like so, and click it down. Making things really, really simple. Keeping things simple, we also have on the I.O. the uh, Q antennas, which we have started seeing, I guess, on uh, some of the ROG boards. It's now coming across to a lot more motherboards, so really, really easy to attach that. But being a creator board, the big thing about this is connectivity. And you can see over here we have a monumental ton of USB ports, including 40G. So we do have USB 4. Uh, on this one, I believe it's actually these two ports, so USB 4. 40 gigabit per second. I mean, for a content creator, someone like us who has to transfer very, very large files, this is gonna be an absolute godsend. So I cannot wait for this one to come in. Moving sort of down the stack a little bit, we have this, the X870P Wi-Fi. So again, Wi-Fi 7, we've got 2.5G Ethernet. We've got PCI Express 5.0 for your graphics card. We've got Gen 5 for your NVMe SSDs. And one really cool thing, I don't know if you noticed it on uh, the other one as well as this, is the ability to kind of easily get access to the battery. I had it just the other week where I had to take off a back plate and a front part just to get to the battery to reset CMOS because I was having issues. This gets around that. You can see that we have M.2 up here, which is shielded, M.2 down here that is shielded, and also another one here. And uh, it looks like, yeah, we've actually got another one over here as well. So for a, let's say, more affordable end of the scale, you get a lot of motherboard for your money. And looking at the I.O. still, plenty of USBs. We've got 2.5 G Ethernet and uh, all important, fast USBs here as well. Yeah, Moving further level. down, we have the Tough Gaming, and I actually really like what they've done with the Tough Gaming because they've made it look a lot more industrious with this kind of tough branding here on the I.O. Now again, being tough, kind of Tough Gaming and where that brand has originated from, you know the fact that it's got the best components in there while still being relatively affordable. So again, we've got PCI Express 5.0 on the graphics and on the NVMe drives. Uh, we've got a couple of SATA ports for people who maybe use older drives. We do have, again, that clear access to the battery. But the key important thing with, I guess, all of these boards really comes down to the I.O. And again, we've got that all important 40G. We've got 2.5G Ethernet. We've got 10 gigabit per second USB ports and them all important Q antennas as well. So yeah, Azus are basically trying to simplify a lot of the things that they're doing. So talking about simplifying things, we have this. It may look simple, but it is, well, it couldn't be further from that. This is the X870i gaming Wi-Fi. I love mini ITX boards and I've always called them pint-sized powerhouses because they always try and cram in as much as they physically can. Now with this, it does look like it takes two NVMe drives. So I think it's got PCI Express 5.0 and PCI Express 4.0. Obviously being ITX, we have just got the single X16 slot, but again, PCI Express 5.0 on there. And uh, we've got the, the little breakout board, which just allows you to connect all your front panel connectors. But if you need more connectivity, obviously you get the breakout box as well, which does give us more USB, 10 gigabit per second, 10 gigabit per second. And then around on the other side, you've got the connector for it. And also it doubles up as a DAC. Now, again, connectivity and looking at the uh, the IO, you can see it's pretty plentiful, especially for a board that's you know that small. 40G, 10G, 10G. It's got a lot of features and 2.5G Ethernet and that all important Wi-Fi 7 because it makes up part of the X870 range. Now, moving down to something a little bit more affordable, X870A Gaming Wi-Fi in white. I believe they're actually doing this in black and in white, so you get a bit of a choice. And I really, really like this. It kind of looks like the PCB's made out of snow. But yeah, really, really like this. And again, we have that feature where we can just press this, take it off, and put the drive in. But this one's a little bit different because when you put it in there, you actually move this sort of forward and back. So depending on the size of the drive, it basically locks it into place. Then you grab this bit, put it in like that and push it down again. Again, they're making things nice and simple for DIY users and things like that. We also have the, the really cool, really nice looking white uh, PCI Express slot down here. Again, we've also got access to the battery at the bottom, um, which yeah, again, just makes things really, really simple. I really like the design on this one because it's kind of got a lot going for it. You've got sort of, you know, silver, white, black, maybe would have liked to have seen the, uh, the memory slots as white, but 
it kind of actually goes with the whole contrast. Again, if we look at the I.O., 2.5G Ethernet, we've got Wi-Fi 7, we've got a pretty decent amount of USBs on here, considering it is just an X870-A, which is going to be more for the kind of mainstream, affordable end of the market. So this is the X870-F gaming Wi-Fi, and we all traditionally know that with a dash F, you do get a lot of bang for your buck. Now, if we're coming a little bit closer, and I'll probably sound like a broken record at this point, but we have again got that really easy Q release system. So you can take that off and, I mean, this is a big chunk of metal. That's definitely going to keep your Gen 5 drive nice and cool. We can then get it onto there and push it down. We have got uh, NVMEs that sit underneath here. So sadly, no, uh, no sort of screwless design on that. You are actually going to have to use a screwdriver to take this panel off. But really nice looking board and does look obviously very similar to the Dash A that we saw in white. This is just now, yeah, slightly beefier, a few more features, but in black. Now, when we look at the IO, which again, you're gonna start seeing a bit of a theme that this is where everything comes down to as to what you're getting if you're upgrading from say an X670 or X670E. On the IO, we've got 2.5G Ethernet, a Wi-Fi 7 with the Q antennas, and then we've just got a plethora of USBs um, on there. We've got a clear CMOS button at the top, we've got a BIOS flashback, and the all important USB 4. I, I just hope, yeah, maybe in the future we start to see the prices of uh, these faster drives that you're gonna be able to connect into these come down a little bit and make it a bit more affordable for people. Now, a lot of the boards that we have actually looked at are X870. I think the Pro Art was the X870E. We actually now have moved up to the sort of higher end. So we are looking at X870E, dash E gaming Wi-Fi. Now on this one, this is quite interesting because we actually have our Q release sort of over here. So we can take that off. And uh, this is where we can see that we can put one of our drives. But we also have another one over here, but this one looks to actually be screwed down. But I'm not even bothered about that because most people are only really gonna have one drive anyway. But at least on this one, you can actually have multiple. So this has got three Gen 5 connectors on there for your M.2s. And then also you've got, um, I think it's two more for the Gen 4 speeds. You have also got four SATA ports, and then we've got our uh, Gen 5 X16 armored uh, PCI Express slot up here. And this has actually got a really cool feature. I believe it's on the Dash E, the Dash F, and also the uh, X870E Hero, where you can put a graphics card in and you can remove it without actually having to press a button or use a latch or anything like that, which is really, really cool. So if we get this back on, it just goes in like that and pushes down. Again, power delivery does look pretty beefy on this as well. Um, but the main thing that again, you're gonna see with all these new motherboards is down to the IO, where again, we have plenty of USB ports of varying speeds all the way up to that USB 4. So leaving the best till last, and this is the ROG Crosshair X870E Hero. Now, you can see straight away, there's a lot more going on with this board in terms of mainly on the design kind of aspect of it, where we've got this huge ROG, looks like a screen, but I don't actually think it is a screen. I think it's just the light reflecting through, but it looks really, really nice. I really like the design on this one, especially with this kind of, almost the way that the light's hitting it, sort of bluey, gray, black, kind of gunmetal kind of coloring going on. Again, they're trying to keep things nice and simple. So we do have that famous connector that I think I've shown on every board now, where you can just take that off, get your drive into place. And again, we've got this kind of bit that we can push down into place and it will lock your M.2 into place. Then you can get the heatsink, put that into there, push down, and it's all done. Now, in terms of this one, you have got PCI Express 5.0 under there, but there are two more PCI Express 5.0 connectors for NVMe drives, and then another two for PCI Express 4.0. Uh, it's also got, again, SATA ports on the side. We've actually get, also got for, I guess, a slight sort of twist, a slim SAS connector, which is just down here. Uh, you don't normally see this on a motherboard, but it's uh, quite interesting to see that and what it's gonna open up for capabilities for those, you know, looking to add in a little bit more storage. Now, the power delivery is a little bit different on this one because while we do have our typical 24 pin and then we've got our two eight pin power connectors at the top, the one that I'm actually sort of more interested in is the fact that we now have this eight pin over there, giving us a lot more power to the components that need it. Now, we did actually watch um, something earlier as well where ASUS are claiming that they have managed to increase the speed that they're able to uh, basically support with AMD by up to 400 mega transfers a second. And that's all to do with uh, the traces that they actually have going from the memory slots. And I don't know if it's just me, but maybe this 8-pin power connector has something to do with it to basically give more power directly to the memory uh, so that it hasn't got to go through the, the rest of the PCB on the board. So really, really interested in this one. I actually can't wait to get this one in and the Pro Art one out of all of them. Um, this one, 
probably more so because, you know, it is for enthusiasts, it is for gamers, and we can see that um, from kind of every element of this board, even down to the I.O., which, again, has a plethora of USB ports. This time we do have 5G Ethernet, we have 2.5G, we've got plenty of 10 gigabit per second USBs, and they're all important USB 4, HDMI, clear CMOS, and a BIOS button, as well as that Q antenna for the Wi-Fi 7. So there we have it. This is uh, all of the boards that we've actually got here with Azus at Technically Gamescom 2024. Let me know which board is gonna be the one that you'd actually like to have in your system, and what processor would you be running in it? because uh, obviously there's talk about X3D chips coming out as part of the Ryzen 9000 series in the near future. And I think if I was looking for gaming, it would have to be the Crosshair X870E Hero with, I don't know, a 90 something 100 X3D. But if I needed something for productivity, it's gonna be the Pro Art down there. But if I want something that's just small form factor, we've got the Mini ITX. And if I want a white motherboard, then we have the Dash A. They really have got something for everyone and from my understanding of speaking to the UK PR rep, we are getting every single one of these motherboards into the offices where we can do some real VRM testing, really sort of delve deep into kind of the nitty gritty of each motherboard and see exactly what they're all about. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's been a, an interesting one. I've had to learn all of this today and produce a video today. And uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for this one. See you in the next one. See you later, bye bye.